Greetings and welcome everybody to the Jane Live on a Thursday where we discuss miracle medicine. And today we're going to be discussing miracle protein, some of the really superfood, plant based, food state, nutrient dense proteins that feed our body. In the series on nutrients that I've been speaking about, we've discussed um, uh, the building blocks that um, work together to create our life force, our vitality, our chi and our prana. And I spoke a lot about the um, superconductive mineral metals. That's in the platinum precious metal, metal metals, gold, silver, copper, nickel, iridium, palladium, platinum, ruthenium, osmium. And those, those, those um, precious um, conductive mineral metals are essential and they are the first step in restoring the body and resetting the body. So we talked about our almost gold there, <clears throat> an alchemical form of those platinum precious metal minerals. Every single body needs it, and we're not always getting it from the plants and the soil. So that is an essential product. We also call the almost gold our battery pack because it gives the, um, the charge, those conductive metals charge the body um, get the electrons flowing. It's a, a similar to plugging a cell phone in. When you consume almost gold, you, you're plugging yourself in. So we call it our battery pack. So the, the um, conductive metal minerals are essential, step one. And then we talked about the essential oils, the flaxseed oil in particular, because it has the highest life force, meaning that the electrons are tightly bound to the protein and neutron in the, in the middle of a molecule, more tightly than any other oil, which means higher life force. So that's what the, the flaxseed oil is doing, but it's doing a number of things in the body apart from omegas. It's also creating a, an electrical potential across the uh, protein double phospholipid layer of the cell membrane, a critical electrical potential for, for food and oxygen to, to cross the, the membrane and for carbon dioxide and waste to leave the cell. So oils, that oil is critical. It's essential. It, it does all sorts of things like line the gut, line the lungs, line the reproductive system, all the mucous membranes, the eyes, etc. Again, an essential oil. We do need it. The flaxseed oil grows near where we are, where we live. We can pick it with our hands. It's, it's, it's suitable for us. The, the density of flaxseed oil versus a fish oil Flaxseed oil is, is the density is more perfect for human consumption. And it's 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 cold pressed and the enzymes are all there for digestion. So now we're going to be talking about protein and the essential proteins and um, the original, original building block proteins. And um, you know, demystifying some of the things. And um, I think one of the big, big misconceptions is that um that of vegetarianism and veganism. And I must say, when I was um, 21 years old at completing my pharmacy degree, um, which was a four-year degree, um, we did a, um, a thesis and mine was on um, the pros and cons of, of vegetarianism. So even then, you know, I was already switched on to all of this, you could imagine. And um, the professor said, it's fine, but just make sure you do a balanced report. So I scrounged around and I got all the information on, 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 on animal protein versus plant protein, which I suppose, you know, has really stood me in good stead in terms of where I am today. So I've um, <clears throat> been researching and studying this for a very long time. And um, always, always coming back to, to plant-based to plant but food state but raw. So um, I was watching a, a talk by one of the doctors who got um, MS um, and um, damage to the myelin sheath of the nerves. And um, she fixed herself. She first went the allopathic route and then she was, could hardly even stand up. And this was about a 10 year journey. And then she, she woke up to, to, to plant based and she um, started having loads and loads and loads, like three full salads a day. She actually also ate um, meat. So it would have been cooked meat. So the argument was she was presenting was that we need raw plant food to heal us. And then she supplemented that with cooked protein. So, um, which is not bioavailable. 
So if you take a scoop of spirulina, a scoop of chicken mince, there's already more protein in the dry, dry weight spirulina, which is 70% protein, than the scoop of, of chicken mince, for example. And the, the spirulina is raw, um, not heated, not cooked. The chicken you would then cook. And of that scoop, only 10 to 20% is absorbed. What happens to the rest? More, I'll tell you. It, it, um, the protein fibers collect in the blood. They, um, they, the protein, extra protein collects in the kidneys, causing kidney stones. Ultimately, it also uh, deposits inside the cells. It doesn't re re get removed from the cells either. So <clears throat> you can see that cooked protein is, is not such a good thing, especially in large amounts. Whereas um, a plant-based protein doesn't have that. It doesn't accumulate in the body. The body uses it all. And um, there's no, you know, side effects. There's no waste product. So, um, you know, my, my, um, my view on all of this is, yes, we do need the, the, um, the three salads a day, for example, and the fruits and nut smoothies and things, the raw foods. And, um, when I look at myself and, and the clients that come in that are on um, plant-based raw foods, there's no problem with protein. It's, it's normal. It's not too high and it's not too low because the availability of protein out of raw plant-based material, if you like, food, is, is 100%. So soak your almonds, soak your chia seeds, sprout your sprouts, um, and eat your kales and your spinaches as, as, as the basic foods. And then we're going to be supplementing with some of the really superfood proteins in a little while, which are on another level. So you can get all your protein requirements without depositing extra protein, cooked protein around the body. And um, so without causing further complications. I've seen people miraculously turn around, you know, in a month never mind two months, in a month by going on to raw food and not at any moment is there lack of protein. So I think it's also a little bit probably fear-based, um, you know, not um, not um, really always backed up by ongoing sustainable results you know, using appropriate uh, validated and verified equipment, such as the quantum software that we use. Um, and, um, you know, pro a protein is an important essential nutrient for the body, you know, for growth and repair. And our bodies are constantly having to, 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 to divide and grow and repair and restore. And um, so we have to have it. And, um, you know, it is provided for us in nature by all sorts of sources. You can look at, um, we just took um, raw raw milk um, and kefir and yogurt and, you know, all the white cheeses, all perfect, um, perfect, um, complete proteins and the emphasis on the raw because, of course, when you heat the protein, that's when it becomes um, non-bioavailable. So you'd want to, you want to continue with the raw food. Um, excellent sources of protein and um, depending on your blood group, depending on your soul preference for food, because food is a soul preference um, and nobody can get in your shoes and direct you as to what you're going to eat because they're not you. And they, we might need certain things at any one moment of the day that's different to anyone else. So a meal plan designed by someone else is, is to me, um, you know, not really feasible or possible. And people who are request a diet plan are being so trained and so programmed into believing that someone else can design this for them. It's rather to put the choices out and say, these are the choices. Anyway, um, so, so dairy is a good source of protein. Meat is a good source of protein. And I mean, if all that doctor really needed to do was have the raw meat. And, um, you know, you know, herring, raw herring is not, it's not um, unknown to humans. Um, and, and there's many cuts of meat that, that we do, that are eaten raw and, um, sushi, for example, it's, you know, raw salmon. So it's not an unknown thing to eat raw meat and it's by far preferable because remember the heat, the, the fat is not heated and of course the protein is not heated. So it's in its natural form, which the body can then use completely. 
with very little um, work to absorb it and very little work to remove the waste. And then we would move on to things like um, lentil, the peas, legumes, chickpeas, lentils, beans themselves, a variety of beans. I bought about 40 different kind of beans the other day from our heirloom um, uh, seed company. And um, now we've got this array of, be of beans growing, and it's very exciting. You can even sprout the beans that you buy from the shops, the black beans is in particular. They sprout so beautifully, and they're just abundant. They just grow their little bushes, and you get um, handfuls of little black beans. Aduki beans, um, any of those beans are, are easy to grow yourself and are readily available in the shops and um, a good source of protein as well. It's also slow released, so it's um, nice and smooth. Um, very good sources of protein too. And um, nuts, nuts and seeds, always important to soak them because of the phytic acid around the outside, which is a protective layer that um, protects the seed from germinating before the conditions are perfect. So we would soak them to, to, to dissolve the phytic acid and then also to make the protein and the nut more easily and readily um, digested and absorbed by the body. So lots and lots of those organic sprouts I mentioned before, um, loaded with building block amino acids, loaded. And we need all these building block amino acids to make up the, the millions of different um, genetics genes, gen our genetic structure, our hormones, our enzymes um, to sustain life in a, in a maximum way. So we need all these, all these protein building blocks. So sprouts are always high on, on anyone's list. And again, you know, you can just sprout some of the things that you've, some of the seeds that you've bought easily. I mean, I've even sprouted an, an, um, almonds before. So it's all doable um, and fun. And of course, it's keeping us off and away from the glycophosphates, the all the insecticides, pesticides, the you know chemical farming that's going on at the moment, keeping keeping us far more healthy and um, and stronger and wiser. And so, also you know, not only almonds but pecan nuts, walnuts, um, all beautiful nuts full of protein. So you can really easily get your your your, your daily quota with that. Um, I'm, I don't want to forget eggs as well, if that's your sole preference as well. Um, organically grown eggs, a very good source of protein. Raw egg would be better because then it's completely bioavailable. It's not you're using a lot of work from the heart, uh, from the from the body. You're not having to to use all your energy to digest the cooked protein. It's raw. You put it in with your 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 smoothies in the morning, um, however you want to eat it. So that's again, if it's your sole preference. So these are all good good sources of protein. Not to forget the um, the spinaches and the kale in particular. So kale is a very very good source of protein. In fact, all the leafy vegetables are, and in a readily absorbable form. So it's not the um, percentage of protein; it's the quality of the protein and the absorbability of the protein, and then the elimination of the protein. So all of these factors need to be taken into consideration. And I've never ever seen a table that actually does um, compare all the factors. All I, I go by on is that um, cooked anything has got a lower energy, a lower vibration, a lower life force. It damages the enzymes, which are proteins anyway, damages the proteins themselves as well. For example, especially microwave cooking, it denatures the protein completely. The body can hardly recognize it. So I'm always going to gravitate back towards raw food because we need to get onto raw food. That is what I'm finding is healing people. And um, rather do a, a whole food smoothie than a, than a juice because... The whole food smoothie contains this, the um, plant cell wall, which is, is critical to the, the repair of our organs and our body. So always go for the, the whole food smoothies rather than anything else. And these are what I call fast foods because they're easy to prepare. They're fresh. They're delicious. Um, you know, you want another one, um, that kind of thing. 
So, and they leave you light. You don't, you don't feel heavy. It's wonderful to feel light in your gastrointestinal tract and not to be um, holding food from days ago, to be completely clean and light. And you want to keep that feeling so that your life force is as high as possible. Because you're, the higher your life force, actually the higher your immunity, the better your genetic codes, and the more resistant you are to infections and disease and negative thoughts. And, um, well, just being emotionally upset, you find that, um, you know, on, on raw foods, people are much more calm uh, because you don't have the adrenaline and the cortisol and the um, things that, um, ha you know, happen to plant-based, to, to animal animals. So, um, but again, it's always a choice. And um, it's, a, it's a time, it's like a line, you just, fit where you need to fit and do what you need to do because that's what's good for you. And some people will go vegan or vegetarian for a while and then they will um, just want to plug this in. And other t and then other times they might um, have a few more, ha go back to a little bit more meat and then, um, then, then stop the meat. I'm not saying any of this is bad. I'm just saying that um, we need to bear in mind that um, we are eating intuitively. We need to eat intuitively as opposed to by a book or by a program that someone's programmed for you. So let's have a look now at some of the um, the really super, super food proteins. And, um, and uh, those that are really good for us. And I'm going to speak from the 365 Healthy by Choice table because I have gone to great lengths to um, include most of these proteins, building block proteins, into my, into the nutrient uh, dense products to give the body a choice because the different proteins are just different molecular shapes and structures offering the body different opportunities. Um, and that's what we would do with the vitamin Cs. We, our, our phyto C, there's 12 different fruits in there that offer the, the body 12 different options in terms of vitamin C structure, um, along with the other other molecules and, and vitamins and phytosterols that go with it. So we want to always, um, you know, offer the body um, the nature-made, food-state, plant-based, um, raw food as nature intended without um, adulterating the plant. And that, by that I mean cooking it or freezing it or extracting it or you're making it into something that's of a lower frequency because in the in the nature made fruit state form you're getting the dna perfect and you're getting the intelligence of the plant coming in and that's that's the 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 um the way the um the quantum software that we use has been designed and that's how it captures the frequency of the plant it's a nature natural nature made plant so it will capture the three dimensional um spatial arrangement of the plant that's working not only physically but also neurologically emotionally spiritually so that's why i'm all for for um raw food and um even in these superfoods especially in these superfoods so I, i'm going to start with my my sort of hallmark product um uh, am i answer no i'm going to go back to the rna dna the replica rna dna which is a product that um I've spoken about we did a we did a big uh, um, I did a webinar on this um, when we talked uh, recently and um, the RNA DNA peptide proteins are the building blocks for actually all the proteins in the body so they are the nuclear proteins adenine guanine cytosine thymidine and uracil when it comes to RNA so those proteins make the DNA strand and they are then a, the cell is able to divide and it may, they make the um, then the, the the cell will divide with all the genetic codes. So all the genes are made up from those those four, the four first four that I mentioned, with uracil being for for the RNA. And then we get um, the amino acids forming out of those, and then we get um, hormones and enzymes, the protein. Um, 
protein uh, form, uh, uh, forms. And, you know, things like hair and nails are virtually 100% protein in the body. So we need it. And it's essential. It's We, we don't make it all. So we do need it. Um, those people that are breatharians are on a very high spiritual plane and they can make this. So I'm just saying generally the everyday person is not um, focused on making all the nutrients that they do need. So that those those five that I've mentioned now are critical key building blocks, essential step one proteins. Um, now you will find that in some of the foods they will make and they have automatically the RNA and the DNA nuclear proteins. For example, bee pollen, for example, chlorella, they will, they will make mRNA, which will then um, go into the cell division um, process and encourage cell division and DNA um, division and rejoining. So those, the, the superfoods that I'm going to mention now are also working um, in, in, a, in a very important place, space to, to, you know, for growth and repair and for the homeostasis of the body. So um, the, the product I wanted to start with, and I have got a few here, but I think let's just start with this one. It's the, um, the Stress Defense Shield. And um, we've got it in a smoothie. And on the front of it, it's got all the ingredients, which I'm going to read. And we also have it in, uh, we've got a brain fuel, which has got the similar base to it. And it's, we've also got the, the stress defense shield and the brain fuel in, um, in uh, capsule form, which would be a plant cellulose, plant um, cell wall vegetable capsule, which is actually a prebiotic. So the probiotics will live off the, off the capsules. So there's nothing um, untoward about the, the vegan plant-based ca capsules. So these, so these capsules and, this, and the smoothie mix, mix um, contain very high amounts of protein. And by that I mean there's hemp seed protein loads of it and a little bit more in the in the stress defense shield package than obviously in the capsules there's more cacao in the stress defense shield than there is in the capsules although two capsules of stress defense shield or brain fuel is equivalent to one scoop of the stress defense shield and you're getting obviously more than um because of the the, the cacao and the hemp and the nature of the smoothie so then we've got maca powder we also have our own um, encapsulated maca powder and that's organic from the very high mountains in South America so that's in here I'm just going to read the protein rich ones blue green algae chlorella spirulina all 18 essential amino acids then the medicinal mushrooms reishi shiataki mayataki cordyceps shaga lion's mane all essential amino acids and then we've got um We've got a lot of other adaptogens and things like that in here, but 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 in here it's, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven complete protein foods, giving the body the choice of eleven different structures to to of protein to use what when it wants at what any particular time it needs it. So I think that's amazing, and um, you know I put this together when my children were young so that I could. Um, ensure that they had building block proteins as well as long chain sugars which are not sweet as well as the minerals the vitamins and the phytonutrients so um that i think is a very good i would assume and call it a meal in one because it's going to bring the proteins in and the precursors the chlorella is going to also make the the mrna so it's not only working just on the normal body tissues but also on the the dna which you know is my favorite so um that one I wanted to share with you. And then um, all of these are available in capsule and indiv individually. And um, the last one I think I want to talk about is an important protein, which is our, our collagen plant-based protein, protein builder. Let me just get the, get the name there for you. It comes in a big 120 um, capsule bottle the capsules are 500 milligrams they're huge and and in here i've put in a lot of um the building block superfoods and herbs to to build a, a build collagen especially for people who are um, accumulating protein so if you're accumulating protein 
Um, the last thing you want to do is keep throwing um, animal beef or chicken-based collagen down your throat because you're going to just keep on um, accumulating that protein. Most people who are accumulating protein don't have the protein enzyme in the first place. And those of you who want to know about enzymes, please go to my YouTube channel, Jane McKenzie, and read up all about enzymes because I talk a lot about the foods there too. But very interesting, uh, a very interesting, interesting topic. So this collagen vegan um, protein builder that I put together had, does have the bee pollen, chlorella. So those are the first two that I told you that make mRNA. And then it's got, uh, I mean, other things. It's got the replica RNA D inside. It's got kelp. So kelp is a wonderful, wonderful source of protein and inexpensive. And it does so many things apart from uh, munch up oil and apart from bringing in D, vitamin D and other vitamins and enzymes. Um, it's 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 a whole food insofar as protein is concerned. So kelp is great. Um, it's got lots of enzymes and other foods that, that are going to be building. So Ganostema, Foti, Trifola, MSM, Vitamin C, Holy Basil, Moringa, Acai Berry, Turmeric, Stinging Nettle, Boswellia, Comfrey, Hostel, Celery. These ingredients all go towards building um, building collagen, essential for our immunity and essential in, in today's living because most of us are carrying protein uh, parasites which dissolve collagen. So every single person that I do an assessment on, I can just say just about, is short of collagen in one place or another. And it's used due to uh, parasite invasion. So just remember that. So we, we, we really do, um, you know, treasure that plant-based collagen builder. And um, that, that's, 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 those are the, the big, big, big superfood proteins. Um, I don't know if there's any actual questions regarding this, but um, there's, there's a whole other aspect, which is, you know, compassion for animals, the factory farming of animals. Um, and, you know, by consuming meat, you will be consuming that consciousness. And as long as everybody is aware of that. Um, and uh, I think we will move towards a, um, a society that we are already moving to a society that's more plant-based. You're seeing plant-based everywhere. Um, I'm saying plant-based and food state and raw. So I'm going to those levels. Um, and Rudolf Steiner said, there'll come a time when everybody is eating plant-based. So I suppose it is a matter of time because sustainability, and I know that, um, you know, uh, various uh, various um, hamburger chains, et cetera, et cetera, are now making a synthetic meat, which comes in a liquid, and as you cook it, it fluffs out, and it looks like a hamburger patty or whatever. So there is uh, is definitely synthetic meat out there, which I think – also needs to stand the test of time and we're not sure um, you know how much of it is genetically modified and what it really is so just be aware of that um, and it, it you know it is being served in restaurants and things so just know all that and um, I, I've tried to keep this discussion more more on on sort of uh, um, direct impact on the body and the body's ability to use raw or cooked protein um, you know, and then I've, I've kept it versus um, your animal protein or, or vegetable protein. So, um, yeah, I think it's all about um, our state of mind when we eat and our consciousness when we're eating, how much protein we're eating. Too much protein is going to age you. I met a man about, sure, it must have been about six, six, seven years ago, and he was a big bodybuilder and he was eating 200 grams of animal protein a day and i looked at him and he was he was basically was dying he was degenerating he looked absolutely terrible so anyway um we i worked out a, a, a little table for him and i showed him the, the equivalent amount of protein in bee pollen in spirulina in nuts and seeds and sprouts and so on and actually to this uh, i've followed him from time to time and he's no longer doing that he's completely reverted to more plant-based protein and he looks much better so um 
yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. That was an interesting turnaround, un unexpected and unintentional. And, um, you know, we're often short of, of the amino acids that are important for the kidneys, that are important for building serotonin and dopamine and, you know, our happy hormones and our will-to-do-things hormones and our, our neurotransmitters. Um, so I see that on the quantum software, I do see gaps. I see gaps in the, in the RNA and the DNA, the, the replica RNA, DNA. So um, we, we do need to eat a cross-section of food and enough food and, um, and, and pure food, as pure food as possible. So I hope without getting scientific about anything, I've, I've given you some good superfoods to go and look at and, and um, consume. Okay, if there are any questions, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to be signing off. And I just want to thank everybody for coming in. It's always an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to speak to you. And I'm only as good as you and you're only as good as me. So it's a nice... Um, Nice teamwork and um, nice energy, energetic change, exchange. And thank you all and, and see you next week.